hi guys hope you're all doing well welcome back to our channel and in this video i'm going to talk about the onboarding process of windows server 2016 to microsoft defender for endpoint now if you're watching this series from the beginning in the last video we have discussed about the onboarding process of windows server 2019 wherein the av as well as edr component or edr agent is built into the os itself but as the core agenda of this video will be knowing how to onboard windows server 2016 end to end what is the workflow that you should follow in terms of making sure you understand each and every aspect of the onboarding itself or the purpose behind configuring a specific component in a predefined way altogether then I will also show you a quick recap of the old method wherein we were using Microsoft monitoring agent commonly termed as MMA agent to make sure the machine gets onboarded to MDE. Then we'll talk about all the capabilities or the new functionality which is available now or new method which is available now which is modern unified solution. So if you will go ahead and read the official documentation of Microsoft, you can see this is how the new term is being made for this kind of an onboarding method, wherein it is clearly mentioned new Windows Server 2012 R2 and 2016 functionality in the modern unified solution. Okay, so previously MMA method was there, but now it's a different installation package that you have to install to make sure the onboarding works and these are the new capabilities which are available with the new package which were not there before okay then we'll talk about the registry changes that happens on the server itself at each and every step and what is the purpose behind those changes and lastly we'll talk about the event logs that you can check to perform basic troubleshooting now, before I go ahead and show you the entire onboarding process end to end, first things first, make sure the server that you are trying to onboard is completely patched or all the security updates have been installed on that particular server altogether. So what you see on the right is the snip of my VM, which I will be showing you in terms of onboarding that VM to MDE and that particular VM is completely patched. All the updates are applied. Okay. Now, for all obvious reasons, always refer to vendor specific articles in terms of knowing the network requirements. So before you go ahead with the onboarding, make sure all the URLs are whitelisted. Now, there is one more point that I would like to add here, and that is for this new method of onboarding, the requirements of URLs are same as compared to what I have shown in my previous video, or the link is same because it's the same URLs which are now being used for 2019 natively and this new component which will be there for 2016. So the Excel sheet which is officially available on the Microsoft documentation page itself is the one that you have to refer but I will be adding that in the description section itself so you can go ahead and check that. Let's take a quick recap now in terms of knowing how things were working when MMA agent was there. So for MDE to work end to end, whether it is AV capability or EDR capabilities, you have to make sure you onboard the server to MDE, right? So think about this server that you have to onboard to MDE. Now, if I'm talking about 2016, in 2016, AV component is already present in the OS itself. I mean, it's been baked into the OS itself. You have to just go ahead and install this particular component so once it is installed step number one is actually completed now the question comes how you can go ahead and check this right so for that all you have to do is go to the settings tab and then click on update and security and then click on windows defender and then there will be one more prompt like open windows defender now this console that you see over here is almost identical to that of skep if you guys remember what we were doing in 2012 r2 itself and it is still there okay so it's not been completely uh, i should say end of support skep is still there but this console to be very precise is exactly same as compared to that of what we were getting in 2012 r2 after installing skep so here in 2016 it's baked in 
into the OS itself, it's available, but the console is same. So if you have this console, this means AV component is installed, it's up and running. I mean, definition updates are happening and you can go ahead and check the rest of the components. But now what we have to understand, this is only the first aspect, that means for AV. Now, in order for EDR capabilities, what we were doing, we were installing MMA agent with the workspace ID and a workspace key. Now, what do I mean by this? That on the same server, we will install MMA agent and we will give workspace ID and work workspace key for MDE. Okay, this was the method which was followed before. And when it comes to URLs or when it comes to endpoints, if you guys remember, these were the cloud uh, connection tests that we were running to make sure all the URLs are accessible. So this is a common troubleshooting that typically applies to MMA as well. That all you need to do is you have to go to this particular folder, which is Microsoft monitoring agent inside program files, go to agent and then run this test. You'll come to know whether the required URLs are available or not. Once everything was in place, MMA agent is installed, your machine will get onboarded to MDE. Now this was the old method. Okay, now let's talk about the new method, which is modern unified solution. So if you guys have monitored this change, the capability to onboard a machine with MMA for 2012 or 2016 is not even available on the portal now. Okay, so when you'll go to the onboarding section and you will select 2012 or 2016, these are the two options that you will get. Okay, now let's talk about the purpose behind these two options. Okay, so if I talk about the first option, which says download installation package. Now this installation package is having two different components, which is AV and EDR both. That means the sensor component is also there and the AV component is also there. Now think about it. When it comes to Windows Server 2016, okay, the AV component already exists. Right. So this means what? When you will install this package, what it will do, it will configure the EDR component on 2016 machine. And then you can use this onboarding package to onboard the machine. It's that simple. So you will download the installation package since AV already exists. It will go ahead and configure the EDR component and then your machine will be onboarded with the help of onboarding script itself. And it is precisely same. In fact, it is same as compared to that of 2019 itself. So the reason why it is termed as unified solution, because if you think about the onboarding process itself, the agent is precisely getting same. Now, what do I mean by this? That when you will install this package and when you will go to program files section, you will find a dedicated folder named as Windows Defender ATP. That is something that I will be showing you next. And that folder is going to have all the different files which are precisely related to sense agent itself. Okay, so now let me show you the entire workflow end to end and then things will make a lot more sense. So now let's begin by understanding the entire workflow itself, wherein we have to onboard 2016 machine with modern unified solution and we have to make sure that the AV component is installed and Defender service is running on the machine. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch to my machine. This is that particular machine, which I will be onboarding. Okay. So if I talk about the host name of this machine, it is 2016 new hyphen unified solution. This is a machine that I'm going to onboard. Now let's just check the state of the service itself, which is Windows Defender service with the help of SCQC WinDefend and SC Query WinDefend. Okay. There was a typo. I'll remove that. Perfect. You can see right now Win Defense Service is running on the machine. The same process, I can go to Add Roles and Features section, and then I'll go to specifically to Features. I'll scroll down, and then I'll select this option, which is Windows Defender Features, and it is showing as installed. Again, I can go to Settings, and I can open up the Windows Defender Console itself. And if you guys remember, this is precisely same or almost identical as compared to that of which we were getting in SCAP. Okay. Now the next step 
is to go ahead and verify if the server has all the latest updates installed or not. So this is something which I've already shown in the deck itself, but still I thought of showing you here. And now if I let's say click on check for updates, it will again go ahead and check. But again, it's completely updated. Now let's say the next option is to go ahead and verify the registries itself okay so for that i'll go to registry editor and as you can see i'm getting one folder named here as windows defender okay but if you guys remember when we were checking in 2019 there were two different folders right which means what that once we will install the component there will be one more folder that will get created over here which will be termed as windows defender atp so this will be the change that you will see. The next step is to go ahead and download and install the modern unified solution package itself. Okay. So for that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch to my browser and then we will install this. Let me go to security.microsoft.com, the same portal from where all the information is available. I'll quickly sign in with my username and password. This will take a couple of seconds and then I'll go to the onboarding section and from there we will download the latest package which is basically having the AV and the EDR component combined right so let's just give it a couple of seconds more it will be there very soon perfect so right now the security.microsoft.com is open I'll go to settings and then I'll go to endpoints and then I'll go to onboarding and here I'm going to select 2012 R2 and 2016 and as you can see these are the two options that I'm getting which I've shown you and explained to you in the deck itself okay so I'll click on this option and the installation will begin but for this particular demo itself I have already downloaded that file and I have kept it in my downloads folder okay one more thing which i would like to tell you here and that is once we'll install this you will see a new folder here termed as windows defender atp because it's the sense agent itself or it's the edr agent itself that is getting installed on this particular machine altogether so two changes one is registry and the other one is this particular folder now i'll click on next i'll accept i'll again click on next and i'll click on install this will take a couple of seconds to get completely installed but you can see here the folder is already populated i'll click on finish and i'll open this particular folder and as you can see it is having all those entries which are typically there in 2019 and you can see the different naming convention itself since ir is also there which precisely means sense incident response capabilities right so now the next step is to go ahead and verify the changes in registries itself okay so i'll come back to registry editor and i'll just refresh this particular console and let's see if we get a different entry in terms of a key altogether and this is what it is windows defender advanced threat protection and one more sub key named as status the next method is to go ahead and check for new sense folder in the event logs itself so for that i'm going to open event viewer and here i'll go to application and service logs then i'll go to microsoft windows i'll scroll down and there will be one specific folder that will get created over here which will be sense now if you guys remember in 2019 it is sense and sense ir but here with this new one it is only one which is sense and if i'll click on operational you can see there are no logs because the machine is not onboarded right now the next step is to go ahead and run the onboarding script itself okay so for that i'll come back to my browser and I'll again go to the same section and this time I'll download the onboarding package. Now, as I've said before, it is precisely same. If you will go ahead and read the script, it is absolutely same. So for this demo, I've just copied that particular folder and I'll paste it here. Okay, let me do something. Let me move it to my C drive so that I can just run it directly from my command prompt itself. So I'll move this folder to my C drive and then I'll extract this particular folder so that we can run the specific script altogether. Okay. Now, 
This is something which I have explained in a lot more detail, but you can just click on edit and read this script if you want to know about more insights that are mentioned in this script or what exactly is happening. Okay, so now let's just run this script and see whether the machine is getting onboarded or not. So let me just clear the screen. This command prompt is already opened with admin privileges. So all I have to do is I have to initiate this script. And I'll click on yes. I mean, I'll just type Y and I'll proceed. Now, this is something uh, which is going to take a couple of minutes or seconds, depending upon the compute power of your machine itself. But in the meanwhile, it is getting completed. Let me just show you the current device inventory itself. So here you can see there is no access machine, which is getting listed over here, which has a name like new 2016 unified solution. That's precisely the host name of our machine. OK, so once this process gets completed, the machine will start getting reflecting on the portal itself and which precisely means that the onboarding process is completed. OK, now let's talk about the last step itself, wherein we are going to verify the registry changes in terms of making sure the onboarding state has been populated with the value one. OK, so as you can see all these different values or different keys have been added and if i talk about onboarding state itself you can see it's showing one now so there are three different stages wherein the registries will be changed the first one is the default one itself the second one is after the installation and the third one is after the onboarding now let's just see the state of the sense service itself and as you can see it is listing now Windows Defender Advanced Threat Protection Service, which is precisely same as compared to that of 2019. OK, this sense agent is same as it was there in 2019 with the help of new package itself. Now, I can also do SC query sense just to check whether the service is running or not. OK, now I'll come back to my browser and I'm just going to refresh it. And let's see whether the machine gets highlighted here or not, or whether it is onboarded or not. Perfect. As you can see, now my machine is getting listed over here, which is 2016 hyphen new hyphen unified solution. OK, now this is the same host name, which is getting listed over there just to be super specific about the machine that we have just onboarded. OK. Now, if I'll give it some time, let's say a couple of minutes, a couple of hours, what I'll see is the different set of information that will get reflected over here. That is very specific to my machine. Now, this is also something which I have covered in my last video, but I'll just show you a quick recap. If I'll copy this particular link after security.microsoft.com machines, and the next section is actually the machine ID itself. If you guys have already worked with APIs, you'll come to know what exactly I'm referring to is basically device ID or machine ID, whatever you want to refer to. But if you will go to sense folder and refresh it, there is an event ID termed as 13 or event ID 13. If you will copy this value, what you will see is the GUID that is getting generated is almost same. So if I'll copy this value from here and I'll come back here, what you will see, it's the same value one is the value that exists on the machine and the other one that you will see on the portal itself okay so this is a kind of a match that you can do to know things end to end so precisely this was all about knowing how the exact onboarding process works what is a workflow old method new method in the next video i'm going to talk about the onboarding process of windows server 2012 with modern solution now if you think that this channel is helping you to learn anything new please feel free to subscribe and share this video with your technical community thank you so much